Are you lost on link connectors or triggered by time traffic lights? On this episode of Magnificent Mods Demystified, I'll show you how to grease that gridlock using Traffic Manager President Edition. Hi, I'm Lee, and this is a city I've been working on for a number of years. In fact, it's one of the very first cities I built in City Skylines, New Springfield. If we zoom out here, we can see that it is not a real big place, not real super happening, but it is also not super duper small. Uh, this city has a bit of a grid to it, but as you can see, it's not a perfect grid like my city in More Money, Less Traffic, if you've seen that series. Uh, so it is possible for me to build a city that has curves lots of them as well as interesting angles so uh, this city is actually one I've been working on quite a bit even recently and you're going to see some more of it in some other tutorials and uh, I think I might just do a show and tell video since I'm really proud of what I've been able to do with this city but this is small beginnings right here or uh, at least you know when it starts to become a medium-sized city or a small-sized city where uh, traffic starts becoming a problem if we're not careful. Uh, so I've got my three entrances to the city here on, uh, from highways here. I've got a main street called High Street that runs across the entire uh, length north and south. I have a main road Market Street that runs through here. I've got a Pine, which is uh, starting to fill out and uh, really uh, just have Mulberry here, which uh, connects through my industrial area here, and I've got another one here with a little bit of farming in the middle right there. Okay, so let's take a look at the traffic view and see what we're up against. Actually, let's take a look at zoning really quick. All right, so there's my industry. See lots of housing, commercial in the middle. That's my typical zoning pattern. If you want to know more, check out More Money, Less Traffic. Um, here is the traffic view. So traffic looks really great. Uh, it's a bit busy on High Street, even in some of the wider parts. Uh, I use the network extensions, uh, and I'm gonna show you some things with Traffic Manager President Edition here, but I've used network extensions to widen some of these roads in the center of town here, and they're still rather busy. And I've actually widened the footprint of High Street out here. Now, Cranston Expansion is a big industrial area that has a serious traffic problem in that uh, these trucks just cannot get out. It's even backing out onto the entrance, so uh, we're just really very constipated here when it comes to our traffic. Uh, let's look at our controls, and we'll see our junctions. We've got a traffic light here, but we only have a stop sign here. Well, let's go ahead and change that to a traffic light and see if it makes a difference. Well, we've managed to free that up, but as you can see, we've created a new problem. Now High Street is backed up. We've cleared out Cranston, but now we've got a backup that goes pretty far back on High Street as well as a cross street over here on Springfield Parkway. Uh, so this really did not solve our problem. What can we do? Well, let's take a look at Traffic Manager President Edition and find out. Okay, so we have our intersection here. Let's take a look at some of the features of Traffic Manager President Edition. We open it up. This is what we'll see for the very first time. We can go ahead and close that health help screen if we want, but we're gonna use that. All right, so lane arrows, that's a really important feature right here. Lane arrows allow users to restrict the set of directions that vehicles are allowed to take coming into an intersection. We see these lane arrows here on the road. Uh, we can actually change them by hand using Traffic Manager President Edition. Uh, we can actually set that, so that is a dedicated left turn lane. Let's start doing by doing that. Uh, now if we rotate around here so we don't get confused, we can click and set this lane to be a right turn only lane. Uh, so it's really as simple as that. We can see the change in the lane arrow right there. Uh, now, uh, when you're working with multiple segments here, the segment has lane arrows on either side of it. 
uh, like this one right here, we've got this lane arrow with a left turn and a straight through. There's no street to turn right onto. We click on the other end of it, then we can see the left turn and the right turn, but there's no straight through because that street ends right there. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how to use the lane arrow feature. Uh, so now let's take a look and see if this has helped our situation any. Well, maybe a little. So what are we going to do? Well, we can uh, take a look at this situation a little bit closer. So we've got a lot of left turn traffic. Okay, now that's starting to clear out. Um, we've got a lot of left turn traffic that wants to come in here. And we've made it so that this free, free flows quite a lot more uh, when the traffic light is green. But the problem is that... Let me slow this down a little bit. When this light is green, we could have left turns because there's really not very many people turning left to come here except for that hot dog van. But there are a lot of people who would like to turn left in here. We also have a lot of chaos whenever this light turns green. Anybody going straight through gets harangued by these people trying to turn left at the same time. And it makes it so that traffic doesn't flow very efficiently through this intersection. Uh, this could eventually cause a pretty serious backup. So if we use a time traffic light, we can get some of this flexibility that we so badly desire. So here's the time traffic light icon right here. And this is a pretty simple tool to use. We click on our junction right here. It allow, gives us a select nodes box where we're going to click set up time traffic light. All right, so now we have our three sets of traffic lights along with pedestrian signals. Uh, the traffic lights and the pedestrian, the pedestrian signal controls the crosswalk that it's closest to. That's a little bit different than the traffic light which controls traffic coming from that direction. Uh, so this traffic light controls everything coming from the south on High Street, this one controls everything coming on the north on High Street, and this traffic light controls everything coming off of Cranston Street right here. But this pedestrian signal controls that crosswalk, this pedestrian signal controls this one, and this, this one. All right, so our first order of business is to add a step. Oh, by the way, once we set that, you see all the red lights, but you see the cars going through. That's because if we go through here, we can actually see the overlay. This uh, stopwatch icon with the two bars, two red bars, that's a pause symbol. Um, that means that this traffic light is not functioning at this time. So now we're going to go back in here and add a step. All right, so as far as minimum time and max time goes, I've seen a lot of tutorials that just kind of pick numbers that are really small. I like to go a little bit bigger. You really need three seconds just to even cross the street if you're a sim on foot. So my minimum time usually is at least three seconds. Uh, otherwise, you might only end up with one car going through the intersection. Usually, we need a little more time than that. Uh, so uh, as far as max time goes, my usual default value ends up being about 12. Sometimes it's nine if it's not a really super busy intersection, but 12 is good because it lets traffic continue going once it gets flowing. Now, if this, for this minimum time, once we get past that, uh, we don't necessarily end up with the maximum time for a traffic light uh, to be green. If traffic, you know, for example, if we're coming uh, from the north on High Street, then if traffic uh, runs out, you know, everything gets through, and we're only six seconds in, well, that traffic light can change and allow the next cycle to take place. So setting it to 12 is really not a big deal. Setting this high is only really uh, important. Setting this lower is really only important when uh, we might have a movement that does have a lot of traffic in it, even though it would be part of the next movement too. Sometimes um, it's not real good at knowing when to change in those situations. So especially if you've got a really elaborate traffic light set up with multiple intersections and things like that. So uh, for a simple intersection like this, going with a max time of 12 is really not going to be a problem. So we'll go ahead and add that step 
Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to edit that. So uh, next thing we want to do is zoom in here and we're going to change the mode on each of these so that we have signals for each direction that we would want to go. We can go left or right coming off of Cranston. If we're coming from the south on high, we can turn left or go straight through. If we're coming from the north on high, we can turn right or go straight through. Uh, so our first cycle, we're going to use a protected left turn. If we have a left turns coming through here, well, we can definitely have straight through traffic go at the same time. Uh, we can't have anything coming from the north on High Street, so uh, we're going to leave those red. Uh, from Cranston Street, though, we will be able to have right turns. Uh, whoops. We can't have left turns because that would interfere with everything turning off of High Street from the south, but a right turn would not cause any problems. So we'll go ahead and make that green. Uh, now, as far as what to do and switch to the next step, if uh, the default's usually fine here, so let's just leave that as it is. Sensitivity is something I usually change. Uh, 0.8 makes for a very quick light change. I like to set my sensitivity at 0.3. That's a very long green red phase. Basically what that does is if perhaps I've got a truck that is stuck in line here and waiting to clear this intersection, I don't have to worry about whether that truck is going to have a huge gap in front of it and the light changes before it gets there and there's a huge line of cars behind it. Um, basically it just gives it time like this little yellow car here to catch up before the light changes. Right there you saw it changed, it was the last thing that made it through. Uh, so we want to have longer green red faces because there's a cost every time we stop traffic if there's you know anything waiting in, in the queue that's left. We want to clear the queue as much as we can, and we want to keep things going for as long as we can without having too much despawning happening because cars are waiting too long at the light. Okay, so that's our first step. Now let's add another step. We can see it inherits the sensitivity, and it also inherits the same cycle. So we're going to end the protected left turn, and that means we can have this one go straight and this one turn right since nothing will be interfering with that movement and that means that we need to stop our right turns coming off of Cranston Street. So that looks like a good next step. We'll go ahead and add that. And our third and final step. At this point we're going to stop all the traffic coming off of High Street and we're going to let all the traffic coming off of Cranston Street. We're going to let it go. Now if we only have left turns here and right turns here we don't have anything holding an inter that would inter interfere with people making a right turn from the north on High Street. So we'll go ahead and allow that. Now last we can take a look and hit view on each of these cycles and see if each of our pedestrian signals turns green. That one's green right there and this one's green right here but this one here never turns green. Uh, now since we don't have anything over here really that sims are going to want to walk to real far i mean if i zoom in i don't think i'm going to see too many sims on that side of the street in the first place so and uh, there really isn't any reason to go there they can cross over here if they need to so what i can do in order to make it i could set my pedestrian signal here um like on this particular cycle, I could set this pedestrian signal to manual and force it to be green. But instead, since this is sort of a redundant crosswalk, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that on auto. Save that. I'm going to open up my junction restrictions here. Now, junction restrictions are important because sometimes you want to make sure that people don't use a crosswalk and sometimes you want people to go ahead and go into an intersection uh, whenever they have the ability to enter whenever there's a green light and not worry about whether they block it uh, so this this here if this is green that will allow cars to enter an intersection uh, even whether whether they block it or not we're gonna go ahead and leave that like this uh, this allows or prohibits u-turns right now they're prohibited 
This allows or prohibits lane changes as cars go through the intersection. Uh, lane changes only happen at nodes, and intersections are nodes. And if your intersections are only one node from the next intersection, then sometimes uh, you can reduce a lot of traffic problems by just allowing sims to, tra uh, to change lanes. Um, you can alleviate that problem. And then finally here, this controls the uh, whether the sims can use this crosswalk or not. So uh, this controls this crosswalk, this controls this one, and this controls this one. So it works a lot like the pedestrian signals. So since I don't want sims to use this crosswalk, I'm going to go ahead and make that so the sims will not use it anymore. Then I can go back to time traffic lights and start it. And we can watch our signal work. So now we have our protected left turn going through. And now we have ended our protected left turn. We're done at all left turns. And everything went through. And now we're letting Cranston Street go. Got a bunch of Sims crossing the street, so that's slowing things down. Uh, this is a this is where it sometimes is prudent to only allow a certain time, like three seconds, uh, at a cycle that keeps the pedestrian signal green and then makes the pedestrian stop and lets the cars go so that there's no interference. So that seems to be making this intersection way more efficient. We still get a fair amount of backup though. So what can we do here? Oh, by the way, now we see that green play icon shows that that traffic light, that time traffic light is working, that it's functioning. Okay, so now we have solved that problem. Now I'd like to make this flow a little bit more, uh, a little bit more efficiently. So I'm going to go ahead and make that four lanes and get rid of the parking. Now I'm going to use the four lane road, small four lane road that it comes with the network extensions to mod. I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade that right there. And then I'm going to take a look at my lane arrows. Got that. I want to make a left turn from that direction and straight through there. And I want to allow right turns uh, right there. And uh, we'll have left turns in this lane and right turns in that lane. Uh, we can, uh, we don't want to have left turns coming out of there. We don't need two right turn lanes. Okay, so Let's speed up the clock and see how this functions. So we still have quite a bit of traffic on High Street that wants to turn left to come on here. So what can we do to make that flow a little better? Well, we can add a second left turn lane. We don't have a lot of straight through traffic. So we're gonna go ahead and prohibit it there and just make that a dedicated left turn lane. So now we will have two left turn lanes that will turn onto Cranston Street. Let's speed up the clock and watch that. Let's see if that makes things work better. As you can see, now we have cleared that queue most of the times when that opens up. So this intersection is working far more efficiently. Now one of the things we could also do is we could just make this another right turn lane and that would give uh, two sets of right turns the ability to go through there too. Uh, that is a totally viable option that we can entertain if we want to. Uh, but I think everything looks like it's working really, really well now so we don't have to worry about this intersection clogging up. 
So hopefully this has helped you understand how to use time traffic lights, at least at a very basic level, as well as lane connectors and lane assignments using network extensions 2 and time traffic lights. Now I am a huge fan of both of these mods. I really find them indispensable. So if you're on a console, I really recommend getting a PC edition if you ever can scrape together the pennies to do it. Uh, it really will make your gameplay experience that much better. So uh, if you have any more questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. And if you like what you see here and you want to see more, go ahead and, and subscribe.